Halo Infinite Competitive Settings Reveal. Premiere will begin shortly. Let's see what 343 is gonna be doing. Competitive settings. Is it gonna go through with HCS settings too or tournament settings? So I don't know, we'll see. Should be interesting. The whole radar, no radar. Is it gonna be pistol start, BR starts? Pistol AR starts? I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see. And like, are we gonna get a glimpse of the maps? It's gonna be very interesting to see what they decide to go with competitive wise. Cause like the aiming's tough. It's a little tough, but the game is smooth. Like the two or the flights we've been doing on the Series X been running perfect. There's no issues or anything. I've had none. Aiming's a little bit tough, but with like minor controller settings adjustments that I made um, on the last flight, like it was running perfect. Like it's good. Like yeah, it's, it, could, it could be a little bit better but with the minor adjustments that I made for my controller settings. I felt like it was. It was a lot better than from what I started with the first, the first two flights, so it was really good. I was able to test it out on Big Team Battle and some social arena. It felt smooth. That was good. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Bravo and I've stuck my way back inside the 343 Industry Studio to check out a world premiere of ranked and competitive gameplay and I have the two best gentlemen to do it with me here. It's L okay, so ranked. Of course, of the Competitive Insights team, longtime pro player. Great yep. to be with you again, man. And also Andrew Witt's lead designer on Halo Infinite. Guys, it's uh, great to be with you today. I want to jump right in because like we said, the world premiere here of competitive and ranked settings and we're going to have gameplay in just a moment. But before we get into that gameplay, Andrew, I'd love to talk a little bit about the philosophy of, of ranked and competitive gameplay for Halo Infinite. We looked at competitive settings the same way that we looked at the rest of the game that like we kind of talked about it. We wanted to be very, very Halo to its core, right? And like uphold the pillars of Halo. We really wanted to make sure that this uh, so no radar. competitive settings felt like competitive Halo, felt like home. Battle rifle starts only, no secondary weapon, no motion tracker, uh, and no grenade hit ticks. So those are the baseline for the rest of the game. Uh, for maps, we have a static curated spawns. We work with the Competitive Insights team to make sure that the scavenging story there it is. Map is really strong and facilitates map control. We want to make sure the, the team that wins is the team that should win. Sure. Uh, you'll have to excuse me because I'm containing my excitement here. And I yeah. Know a lot of fans of Competitive Halo over the years will be really excited to hear about these settings too. Uh, and, and also to see them in action. So I think let's go ahead and jump right into the gameplay. Uh, BR right now, starts. Town, this is going to be your gameplay that you've been so kind to share with us. This is going to be a full pro team competitive insights gameplay, which is pretty cool to see kind of all of you guys who have been going at each Strongholds. other. Strongholds. BR starts. Game, uh, now here of Strongholds on Reaper. No radar. Those of you who've been playing in the Harry's. Harry's flight weekends will of course have Nick been Wayne. able to get your hands on no this exact game type, but you're going to now see it for the first time from a competitive POV with competitive wow. settings, of course, also with some pro player point of view. So Sal, walk us through the opening here, Strongholds on Recharge. So this is Strongholds. Obviously, you have to go for the other Strongholds, but we're going for mid control here and camo. And my teammates are mid map. Oof. Nice. Two players into me. I get the easy double. Oh. I get the triple as well. Where is it? And apparently I get the overkill too. <laughs> yes, right. I do. So not there a bad go. start, <laughs> complete control, and now I'm Captain C. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Dude. I mean, you know these guys pretty well. I don't know if any like cash was exchanged to uh, <laughs> allow you to open up with an overkill here on this world premiere of competitive gameplay. But uh, excited to to be able to look at that gameplay here. I think awesome. uh, one of the first things that we of course want to talk about is that Stronghold as a game type. 
Now you were just talking about game modes and VR your starts. Table. A little bit of different scoring mechanics here. Okay, which you can get that weapon in competitive. Strongholds is returning from Halo 5. Really and ranked. Very well in Halo 5, and it was well regarded by the competitive community. So we want to iterate on it in meaningful ways. And one of those meaningful ways is uh, how to contest and how scoring works. In Strongholds, when you own two zones, you begin scoring. And now if the enemy, uh, enemy team captures any progress towards one of your zones, it stops your scoring run. So that way, uh, you need to maintain con absolute control over all of your uh, all of your captured zones to continue scoring. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's a oh. great change. And anyone who played a lot of Halo 5 or watched a lot of Halo 5 Strongholds will remember scenarios where they had all the pieces in place to maybe get a perfect comeback. And even though they were halfway through the cap on that Stronghold they needed, uh, as you call it, like the drip time allowed the other team to win. And it felt a little bit anticlimactic. So I think a lot of people have already seen in the Halo Infinite flights, the ability nice. to stop everything on the dime and come back is, is pretty fantastic to see. Uh, another thing that's really cool, is, man. Is equipment, Sal, we're already seeing you kind of have used that equipment and make sure that you're using grapple to be everywhere you need to be on the map right now. Yep. No so radar. Sure that's classic Halo. Team, so Competitive. That's ranked. Another thing we should talk about, of, of, of course, is such a big piece of this that we're going to see is that's just the fact that we have motion tracker disabled and how that impacts moment to moment gameplay throughout the entirety. No of radar and BR starts. Of that that's in this game that we should talk classic about Halo about 2, the, the 3. decision there and, and just how much that impacts the gameplay. Yeah, we really wanted um, the game to be as competitive as possible, working with the Competitive Insights team to, to kind of make sure we measure up in that regard. And, and part of the things, uh, one of the things we wanted to kind of focus on was awareness, right? Awareness and communication being really pivotal to uh, which is the better team that wins. So that's why uh, we pursued that direction. I can't wait to grind on this game, man. Here in terms of how that rolls. Yeah, absolutely. Sal, you put it best when we were talking earlier just before we started recording just you know um, talking about information yep. earned and the fact that given with, versus earned yeah yep. absolutely um, just how important that is yeah so we wanted players to actually have to go out of their way and get info themselves versus like wow. an indicator or UI telling you where players are and how weak they are so it's just more more awareness and more skills and more thought process on this yeah absolutely <sighs> as we take a look here uh, about 70 I wish this was looking here, uh, as you're gonna get, oh, ahead and get super like here. But you guys are doing pretty well HD but Continually rotate stream is a little well. tough on my screen. Yep, just using some good comms here, collapsing on stronghold together, and nice bait and switching going on right here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think another thing we, we should wow, we still got the kill. Go ahead and get this kill uh, back. Hydro, you're gonna be able to pick up. We're gonna see some sword and some equipment play. So it's probably a good opportunity. Three, four, three. Is that assault? So right here, I pair repulsor and sword. Oof. To use That's nice. Some creative shortcuts here. And right. That guy had no idea. I don't even think I've so seen sword gameplay. Shortcut mixed in with no uh motion wow features. this allows you to make crazy plays like that honestly yeah That's so cool. there's so many pieces to talk about there just the fact that you can creatively go from bottom middle all the way up to top a like that with the sword like you said if someone is watching motion tracker in a competitive setting they're going to be watching that doorway that that play doesn't really happen in those settings so sword looks like, like it's a little way, just running away from you weird. with their heads down at this point in the game as you're racking up Almost. even more kills but that brings us perfectly actually to a camo pickup and the first thing we'll talk about here is just camo the new and mechanic, sword. Andrew, of course. People have seen it, but it's worth talking to to, to you as lead designer on the, the decision there, to, of course, uh, in conjunction with the sandbox. No team. faster so movement with sure sword, too, from, like, Halo 5. And you can determine when you want to activate it. Yeah, the, the sandbox team did an awesome job working on the, the power equipment in this game, and so being able to pocket uh, power equipment and it taking the spot of other equipment really brings more agency in terms yeah, of how it's you gonna be really these, fun. Uh, these items to your advantage, right? And also hard decision-making. Halo's always about making a million decisions, like having a million decisions to, to do in a, in a given second, right? And what's the best one? And this kind of adds to that, right? Is do I swap grapple shot for overshield? And do I use it now and then pick a, uh, the grapple shot back up? What do I do? What is my combinatory effects? I wonder if social, if they're gonna have like a social slayer, the right are they gonna be the same setting? Test with me. These are all the kind of questions we asked of ourselves and. And um, ultimately, what you see here today is the fruit of those labors, right? And make sure that we test that hypothesis. Because I, I love ranked, but if you're not playing in, yeah, it's in a squad, it's going to be you know, the, the term pretty on tough, zone, I can tell. Competitive Halo has been kind of a, you There's know, a lot of OGs that, that are going to be uh, teaming up. ebb and flow over the years of how does equipment fit or not fit into Competitive Halo. So to see how much it's not only being accepted, but I would even say embraced with things like clips on Twitter, or Twitch, etc., has been pretty amazing. Uh, I'd love to talk about that quickly, just kind of the all-up philosophy of how you found this sweet spot balance with the equipment that's in the game that gives players some creativity. I guess no BXB. 
They wanted to make sure that the equipment added to the skill of the game, right? That was the skill gap and then the skill ceiling. So the combinatory effects of... I'm not gonna lie, the BXP gave me a lot of kills. And multi-kills. Like, the ability to traverse the map the way he did. I guess they got rid of it. Both for newcomer players and also pro players. Would have been nice if they kept it, but... The expression was really important for us in development in terms of adding these things in. And then fitting in with everything else in the sandbox. Like, they should have put it like how Halo 2 has it. You have to, like, time it, not just spam buttons. Whoever spams the buttons super quick wins. Like, a timed BXP would have been good. That player actually had no idea how much damage he was actually doing, or if he was even hitting me. He had to go out of his way to make sure that I was weak and get the kill on me. My play right there was to make him waste as much time as possible and to... Put him in a spot where my teammates could get the cleanup trade on him. Absolutely, and that's a situation that plays out completely differently with both motion tracker and grenade hit markers on. Also forces that player to even spend those grenades, right? So it really changes the way that that plays out. It allows you to have so much more power as a player there. You're burning camo, you're spending that player's grenades, and you're also taking that player. My little brother's really good at this game. <laughs> and it really changes the way that all that plays out. Absolutely. Uh, another thing I'd love to talk about here is we see more continuous control from Sal and Team Andrew is also just a di dynamic between, of course, we've got the BR utility weapon that so many players will be excited to see, but we're also seeing Sal use a lot of Mangler. We're seeing some commando. Uh, how you guys really thought about the dynamic between this utility weapon is really important and it, and it is such a core part of the gameplay. However, the weapons on the battlefield are also a big piece as well. Yeah, I think the Sandbox team did a really excellent job of making sure that all the weapons have a specific role in the game. The battle rifle being the utility weapon is really important to being uh, for players to being viable. Yeah, that movement. Them having expression of spawn. But we I don't mind the movement. Have, um, scavenging I is like so it. important to the game, right? And so we wanted to keep on having them scavenge the battlefield. How we did that was we took away that secondary weapon slot and have it be free. So it's only the battle rifle off of spawn. And so optimizers will want to fill their inventory, fill their pockets in order to be able to be as effective as they possibly can in a match. So going with that scavenging story of the map being very curated with very specific items and toys in the map and, you know, filling up that their inventory is, is super important. I'm just glad it's BR starts. Like... Yeah, absolutely. We see another camo grab. And it sucks. I was so already getting well. used to the pistol, but nice, nice job. I prefer and BRs. To, uh, to get away and also, uh, you know, of course, be able to go away now with a grapple camo mangler, which is a pretty sweet setup as well. Pretty ideal. Let's see what I do with it. Let's go ahead and see. And at, at this point, of course, it's right now... 216 to 137 or one thing worth talking about with that new scoring mechanic sal is ooh, one sec we got a contested stronghold here let's see how you play this one out okay well done uh takes down the first player i'm gonna go ahead and finish that cap oh almost finish it but instead go ahead and up uh, nice grapple out but yeah it's okay uh one thing we should talk about though at this point because even though there's quite a gap or right, quite a delta between the the scores in the game you really can't take your foot off the gas, whereas in Halo 5, you might be a little more comfortable because you know you have, as long as you have control with X amount of time left, you're probably going to win the game. But with the ability to stop everything looks like the earlier, immediately while, while just stepping into a stronghold, that kind of changes the way that competitive teams will play. with the grenades. Yeah. Especially with the new real set where you can Those grenades had, like, some there. crazy can't splash really damage. It's like yeah, Halo 1 grenades. Game here, so just making sure we keep up the comms and the teamwork. Just pushing strongholds together. Yeah, absolutely, and you've done it so well here as well. Take a look at this play as well, uh, as you're going to go ahead and grapple him. Ew. Unlucky. <laughs> Unlucky. Can I have that weapon here? It's, it's just worth noting the fact that you do have kind of that creativity, right? I mean, Don't be XP, I never guess. Never has there been in competitive Halo a, a moment like that, where you could fly out of a door and then fly into an entryway like that and be able to set up a play like that. So it's pretty special to see and the fact that it is it, it balanced the way that it is right it, it, i'm sure was quite a challenge andrew uh for for a long time i'm sure yeah we uh we tested a lot of different things a lot of different settings but we wanted to make sure that the gra things like the grapple and, and really all so the three kind of, shots in a kind of melee expression element right the things that are powering all those clips that you're seeing on the internet we're seeing that we're all gleefully seeing on the internet um we want to make sure that uh, it's important for expression with equipment. I, I want to do this. I want to do this and this. I want to repulse somebody and then follow up with with that mangler melee or things that are. I want to put somebody into a wall and knock them off the map. Uh, expression is very paramount for for the, some of the designs we've done this game. Certainly, I've seen nice some patience. In the forms of being repulsed off the back of silo there by the hammer many many times in matchmaking. I've also uh, been on the receiving end of. Uh, uh, so this is going to be ranked players, uh, and competitive so, uh, settings. I've definitely seen different forms of that expression um, t getting the better of me 
uh, throughout these weekends. Uh, as we take a look at these last few seconds here, Sal, closing it out, I think we're going to see uh, in just a moment you guys close this out. Yes, some celebratory needler shots to end the game. What, what better way to finish a match as well? 250 to 170 is our final score there. Uh, Sal, you guys ended out on top. A pretty strong performance, I'm not going to lie. Appreciate it. We'll go ahead and take a look at the post-game carnage report, too, because uh, there's some sweet PGCR stats, and some people will have seen a little bit of this in the post-game carnage reports in the flighting, but uh, a few things that are worth highlighting here. Of course, you're overkill, but on top of that, you've got some cool things here in terms of defensive kills, offensive kills, also things like the max spree, which people will be familiar with, but there's some newcomers as well. Returning stats like shots hit, uh, you know, versus shots fired, but also one that you and I were talking about is also damage taken, which is a cool stat to have. That's personally my favorite nice. because that is like the unsung hero. It tells a real story because some players might have the most kills, but they're actually not having the most influence on the map. Yeah. So damage taken is part of that story where a person could be causing chaos and getting shot at from everyone on the opposing team. Like a distraction, like for example, like Austin might have more kills, but I could be taking more damage because sure. I'm, I'm making it easier for him, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And as a, and as, a, as a commentator, as an analyst, the fact that we now have a piece of that story, if you think of the uh, hundreds of thousands of hours of competitive Halo gameplay that have taken place, uh, just the fact that we never really had the story of damage taken and, and, and what that was for each match. So the fact that looking at Halo Infinite tournaments, we're going to have, have stats like that is pretty cool to be able to see a piece of a Halo match uh, that we've never really had the story of before. Yeah, it's just... All this conversation around stats and PGCR just kind of makes me really happy because um, ultimately that's what this is. This this whole feature is for, right? Is to tell the story of the match of yeah. not only how did you do, how did you do, how did your team do, how did the enemy team do, right? Where do you need to uh, improve, right? Or how could you've done things better? Yeah. Uh, really, that whole story is is why features like this exist, and so that we're sitting here talking about like nuanced stats yeah. and things like that. It's like, it's really good. Just like being in this moment in time, how close we are to, to launch. Totally. Yeah. I think it, it gets us excited. I'm sure so many viewers as well of this video getting kind of excited about the, those nuanced little details, just like you say, uh, l -Town, I'll start with you. Uh, any, any closing words, uh, as we take a look at, uh, your gameplay here and show off competitive and ranked gameplay to the world. Honestly, I'm just excited for everyone to get their hands on this. We worked hard and I hope everyone's happy with the settings we, we landed on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, I am myself I'm super and the excited, team. man. This for, for a while, really it's excited to see weird, like, uh, uh, folks, you know, uh, get their hands on it, right? The flights have been really exciting for us. I really what I do want is a new the response, uh, and all the feedback, right? campaign trailer. Uh, same thing here. We're really excited to see uh, what the competitive community uh, does with this game, with these settings, uh, to see what they're able to accomplish in matches, right? See what ranked is like, see what uh, HCS is like. All this is just super super great right now it's a good it's a good time to be a halo fan yeah it is uh, as a halo fan and on behalf of the whole are they gonna have like a level 50 thank you both for the amount of time is it gonna be like the halo 5 champion because it has already shown onyx and all that in in you know in the flighting in the excitement for the game um and it was so special for me to play such a small role in sitting with you two with all the amount of work you put into this game to be part of this competitive reveal is really special for me so thank you both don't cry bravo on, .com on uh, competitive settings and you can find a blog on even more details there of course stay tuned to at halo on twitter as well as halo waypoint for even more as we get ready of course and also at hcs as we get ready for the first halo tournament shortly after launch as well uh, it's going to do it for us for now uh, from the 343 live stream studio. It's been a pleasure showing off competitive gameplay, and uh, we'll see you on December 8th. Dang. That was it. Can we get, like, an overview? <laughs> no BR. BR starts. Oh well, how was that? My gamer tag and my Twitch, if y'all want to follow, add me, play some Halo. But, dang. No BR, I mean, no radar and BR starts. It's like the main two everybody was on Twitter arguing about. Which is core Halo. Halo 2, Halo 3. The main ones where it got like explosively popular. No radar. VR starts. We got it. I'm good. And it's ranked and competitive. So your typical Team Slayer, hardcore, whatever they're going to do. Objective. And then the HCS settings, 
no radar beer starts and no secondary so that's interesting too cool um that's it i'm happy for that i was really hoping they wouldn't put radar and beer starts and they got it i'm good I'm out. We'll definitely be playing this day one. I already have it pre-ordered. Have the build downloaded and installed. A multiplayer, which is free. I'll be doing that first. I want to run campaign, but I want to do a co-op, which sucks. It's not at launch, but anyway. Peace.